For those of you that don't know, I'm the one and only infamous Kentucky Yankee. And what we've been working on is over here. It's a 1971 CB350. This is a basket case I picked up. And I have been uploading videos on how I got it all back together. So if you're new to the channel, you are now up to speed. If you're a lifetime subscriber or a steady, uh, loyal viewer, how can I show my gratitude towards you folks? And what I mean by that is this project, you guys have just jumped right in there, leaving all kinds of comments, giving your input, giving your information, and I love it. My Facebook and Instagram have just been blowing up. Links in the description below if you're not already involved in that. It's just been a whole lot of fun, guys, and I greatly appreciate it. Today's episode is going to be all about the electrical system. Without further ado, let's just jump right in on that. What I did with this was redid all these switches. I didn't film it, but I redid both of these switches. I took them off, took them completely apart, cleaned them all with electrical cleaner, put diode electric grease on them. I had to solder some things in there. It was tedious, slow, it sucked. Uh, part of the deal is my vision is, is getting poor, so it just was a nightmare doing it. Took hours, it shouldn't have, but it did. That's completed, but you know, I can't film something like that. I'm all frustrated, can't see, you know, working with these little tiny parts and my big fumbling fingers around it just, so I didn't film it. Anyways, that's done. So what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna put all these wires in the headlight bucket. I will sift through and sort through them all. It's just a matter of matching the colors, you know. If there's one nicked or whatever, I'll repair it. I'm gonna clean all the connectors up with electrical you know that electrical cleaner just to make sure that they have good contacts I might even put a little drop of diode electric grease I'm gonna run down through here go through all this wiring straighten it all up try and get it how I think it was from the factory this main wiring harness right here runs up through here into this headlight bucket back here you see there is a Ah, there's a hole right there for it to run through. These are the wires coming off of the steering wheel here. You see down there? And they come up through that same hole in the headlight bucket. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. The wiring to hold the headlight bucket on, you know, the bolts and wiring and all that are together right here. So you run all this crap through here, and then you put this through there. This little spacer right here, fits in between the plastic so you don't crush it this goes on the inside the bolt the lock nut and there's supposed to be another flat washer there like that goes on the outside I made a funny mistake in a previous video when I was putting this coil on and I said this key thing wouldn't fit on there and I'd have to figure out what the deal was and I put extra nuts on there and I'm an idiot because it does fit perfectly on there I have no clue isn't that funny how you do stupid stuff like that I have no clue why I thought this would not fit onto there it just doesn't even make sense I went to put the gauges on because I wanna you know they have wires too that go through the headlight bucket and I did a little goof see the gauges mount to this bracket just like that with one bolt on the back each gauge so there's that one, here's this one, I don't know which side to go on. Anyways, this piece right here was supposed to be mounted right there. So when we did the forks, I did a goof up. So I gotta take these two bolts out and mount that on there with the gauges mounted on there. So my gauges are just laid up here right now because I ordered bulbs to go in there. The bulbs are so old, they're not gonna be any good, so I ordered new ones. I found a couple interesting, what I found to be cool things about the wiring in here. First thing is if there's two male sides, what they'll do is they'll use this little jumper to accommodate the two male sides. I thought that was interesting and weird, but that's what they do. Like here's one right here, see? It's just a jumper. Another thing I found pretty cool, and so I'm tracing back the wires. Because all I got is a white wire and a white wire with a yellow trace on one side. This is a white wire with a yellow trace. I hope 
you can probably you could probably just barely see that yellow trace on this white wire. This wire is white. So I'm like, what you know, so I'm trying to trace it down and I noticed this and you guys probably already did. Check it out. This insulator is yellow on one side and clear on the other. And that you know means that even though this is a pure white wire with this insulator it's white with a yellow trace so I just thought that was a couple interesting things I ran into on the wiring I always think stuff like that's cool and maybe it'll save somebody some time if they're working on their CB 350 hand dog I'm going through cleaning the wiring up and all that I put this bracket on for the key switch and I thought this was worth filming see how this this is what you're gonna run into this has all been patched up pretty good patch job actually it was soldered so that was something but it was all wadded up in tape and I knew there was a mess under there I just didn't know what kind of a mess and I don't know why this was done but there it is you see so I'm going through and cleaning stuff like this all up and I've got another wiring harness down here that has the pieces what I'm gonna do is put this this is supposed to be on there key switch is supposed to be on here so I'll get all that fixed up and show you what it looks like after I get it patched I was inside the house editing this video right now and those long wires that I was showing you those are extensions to go to a key switch that could fit up here on the handlebars what it is I wanted to clear this up once and for all this right here, this bracket, mounts right there. And you can put your key there. And then also, we have this bracket that I've been talking about the whole time that fits there. And we have the key there. And the reason I got confused about not putting this on and it not fitting is because I was trying to mount this bracket on there. Which, as you can see, would not fit. But this one does. And again, the wires were extended from our harness to go up here to this nice bracket I just had to clear that up I got so confused about all that and couldn't figure out what the heck was going on and I even called myself an idiot as you know and I maybe still am but mystery solved and by the way this is original to this year down here where it's mounted I believe and that's what we're going with I like it better anyways so all this wiring now is done. I just got to put the headlight in and I will, like I said, once I get this small bulb to go in here and then all we have to do is plug the headlight in. No big deal. I use these older turn signals, the worst ones, and that is what I wanted to use because if I do the restoration, I want to use the best parts, want to clean up the best parts. So these are fine for now. So this wiring and key is all fixed up as far as I am concerned. Electric tape is not my favorite conduit or loom, but it, it'll work for this application. All I did was fix the wires from here to this switch. There you go. You see there, that's how it's supposed to be. And then the switch, I had to put this connector on there. It was just... All the wiring harness was kind of chopped up, cut up, so I just put it back how it was supposed to be. And here's our key switch. I like this little cover. Uh, not that it matters much. Anyways, I got to take this back off because I got to bring it to Freddy. He's supposed to cut me a key for it. And, of course, when I get done, all this stuff has got to be zip-tied up to the frame and stuff so it's not just dangling, hanging around, stuff like that. So take a look, our basket case restored to its factory stance, if you will, so to speak. 
chopper forks removed. And I got to be honest with you, the chopper forks were growing on me without a doubt. I thought they were pretty cool, but just not my thing on this particular bike. There was going to be issues too with, with the stand and the kickstand and all that I didn't want to deal with. It's going to steer a lot better the way it is now, back to its factory settings. It's going to ride better, all of that. These bulbs came in, these little bulbs for my gauges and stuff. So expensive little boogers, but they're authentic Honda. So I'm going to put them in these gauges, these little rubber grommets. See, they just pop out. And we'll put a bulb in there. Let me see, I can show you. I think most of you know how to put bulbs in, but there we go. I don't want to deal with bulbs burning out later and having to take this off and get in there and all this. So that's why I'm going to do them all now. Just change them out. We'll bolt the gauges down. We're going to throw the headlight in there. And just kind of getting things done in the front end here. Did you folks need an up close view of this? You see the bulbs just push down, turn in there. And then these rubbers just shove in the back of these gauges. That's all there is to it. I'm cleaning up this rusty, crappy, corroded stuff just to make sure they work good. But that's all there is to it. There's your close-up view. All right, guys, right now I'm editing video, and this is a lot of recorded video I have about doing this basket case motorcycle, and I recorded a whole lot of it without editing it while I was recording it, so some of the stuff's a little jumbled up, and that's because my, my channel was hijacked, you know. So we need to get this back fender put on, and I'm going to say weird things like, we already did the front fender, blah, 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 and just bear with me, guys. It's important that I get this back fender on first so we can get the turn signals and the brake light going. I'm kind of wanting this episode to be all about the electrical system. And because my channel was hijacked, if you guys are enjoying this video, please share it with your friends. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment below. All that stuff helps to get this thing moving again because it affects the algorithm when you don't upload regularly. I'm going to use the Lime Away again. I really like that Lime Away. So you guys can see how much rust is on this back fender. See that? And that way you can get kind of before and after. This one's not terrible. I think this one's a lot better than the front one we did. So it should clean up decent. The reason I like this fender so much is because it's got this cool badge on it. And this is a registration from 1979. Looks like I can't tell what state. I can't tell what state. Maybe you guys can read it. What's it say there? Rhode Island. See it? Look here. Check it out. 79. Rhode Island. So that's cool. All right. This bracket is bent all to crap and the lens is broke. I'm just, I think I'm going to take it off and uh, beat it back straight and slam it on there. It'll be all right. So this time on the very worst part that was really rusty, I put this paper towel on there and soaked it because I just think it'll hold that 
you know that stuff on there better let it work longer and there it is so far this stuff I think I'm happy with the way this stuff works here's the after shot I'm done I just rinsed it off with a hose you can see that's the roughest part looks like it's a brown cast in the camera but it's really not it it came out decent I think it's a good start if you're wanting to clean up your fenders and stuff I just think it's a good start to get the rust cleared off of there and then you can go and polish them from there which I'm not going to do I'm gonna rub them down with just a little bit of oil and that's gonna be it for me because I'm only allowing so much time for cleaning this stuff up I'm plenty satisfied with it just like that all right so I did spend about two minutes polishing it with mothers but I'm serious guys just about two minutes put it on there rubbed it off that was it and it just did clean up that little bit of it was already it was actually already turning brown a little bit from that rust if you don't preserve if you don't put something on here to preserve it polish oil or something it's just gonna rust almost instantaneously back I love this little handle right here it's so you can grab the bike and pick it up to put it on the center stand that's 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 cool that's a cool little detail on this motorbike I'm gonna throw the back fender on now I'm gonna shove this fender on Here's our back turn signals. You see you have a rubber grommet in the frame there. I found that. Here's your back turn signal. And uh, we'll deal with the wires later. But anyways, it fits there like that. And it had this big hole. I couldn't figure out what the deal was with that. So I rummaged around and found it has this little rubber grommet here. And a washer. And so it fits perfectly. Let me show you. See there, what a perfect fit. So, and uh, I guess the metal never touches, so it has its own ground wire that we're gonna have to. That looks like a, yeah, okay. This one, the ground wire that we're gonna have to hook up. Let's get the other side before I tighten this all the way up. Another little detail I just noticed look, that's got a piece of rubber on the piece that hooks it right there on that spot the other one doesn't this one's about wore out anyways it'll be all right I installed the battery and I want you guys to join me in this journey of turning the key on for the very first time so I hadn't done it. I don't know what to expect. Let's try it together. First, uh, the kill it's on. Here we go. I don't know that I'm going to start it, but let's see if the starter cranks. See if the lights work. Oh, here's the first thing I saw. That looks like a neutral light to me. <laughs> cool. The key has two positions. I'm going to flick it on there. That's the second position. And this back light came on like a tail light. <clears throat> I don't know why Hondas are like that. Let's see the lights now. Well, let's try. Here's a there's a left turn not working. Let's try the lights. The headlight. No headlight. Ah, there we go. I just turned it back one. I'm not. Okay, so the first turn, I don't know what the second turn is for. There's left turn. Ha <laughs> ha! Check it out. So there you go, guys. There is proof right there that this is the first time I've turned the key on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You probably couldn't see with the light on. There you go. If you will notice, I've got it wired wrong. The left turn's flashing and the right turn's flashing, so no big deal. I'll swap them here in the back. But let's try the other side. And we got just one. That That's backwards, like I say, in the back. And then probably the bulb up front. I didn't mess with the bulbs on the turn signals. But this bulb is working for the turn signal, so that's cool. We're good. Oh. 
Guess, guess what? Guess what? We have a horn. Let's see what else we can check. Let's see if it cranks a little bit if I hit the button here. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Now, brake light. Let's check the brake light. This is cool. Everything's working. Looks like I gotta, I gotta check the right front bulb. Swap the two wires in the back. We're in pretty good shape here. Brake light. Let's see what she does. Brake light. And we got a nice brake light. Let me check the headlights again. That is, okay, that's a turn. Headlight. There's one headlight, yep. We got headlight, tail light. Okay, check it out up here. Low beam, high beam. Low beam, high beam. And off. This is cool. Everything, almost everything on the electrical system right now as far as I can tell you know without it running I, I need to check uh, the, the voltage and the regulator and all that crap but mostly we're in good shape here I'll, I'll get those turn signals straightened up I have this test light hooked to the negative side of the battery and I just you know so I put it there after checking the bulb and this wire coming in, everything was good. So, there you go. It's lighting up wherever I touch it. It's because this is supposed to be grounded. So, it's just dirty right there. I need to clean that up and ground it. So, I have a wire going to ground from the battery. You know, just to prove this to you folks. See there? Whoa! Bright, huh? See that? What I'm doing here... Uh, just touching it. You can touch it anywhere on it. But see, when this is grounded good, it'll be fixed. Now, our diagonal deal, you know where they're wrong? I just noticed two, and this, I should have noticed it earlier. See, that nut is on the top with the wire. And I kind of thought that was ugly to start with. Well, I have it backwards. I'm going to take this bulb and everything over here. Take this one over here. I knew I matched the wires right. They're color-coded. And I knew that they were matched right, but I couldn't figure out what was going on. But I'm just going to flip these over, and you won't see this nut and wire. All you'll see is the top of the head of a bolt when I switch them. So we'll just switch sides with those, and that'll be fixed. Left turn. And there's the left turn. Nice. Right turn. And there is right turn. One in the front, one in the back. All fixed up. That's it for this one, guys. We got the electrical system pretty much lined out on this. If you hadn't seen the previous videos of this basket case, I'll leave a link in the description below to those videos. And maybe consider subscribing to my channel so you can keep up with new uploads. I'd appreciate that. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow. We'll see you next time.